Now let's go back and take a more in-depth look at the facilitator's role. The facilitator must prepare by becoming familiar with the scenario and the training objective. You must also set up the table and props. The facilitator is responsible for running the scenario with a specific training objective in mind. The facilitator should introduce the table rules. Good afternoon, guys. You know, I'm Julian, as you guys know. I'll be facilitating the sand table this afternoon. <coughs> Go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with uh, the, some of the table rules. Um, we're going to go ahead and use uh, these radios as props. You can go ahead and take one, pass it on, make sure everybody has a radio. So in order to simulation, any communication that you guys have with each other, if you're not face-to-face, -face, make sure that you're communicating with the radio like you would on an incident. Uh, if you're face-to-face, -face, like if you're on the line together or you happen to be in a staging area or something like that, go ahead and communicate together just like, like you normally would. Um, I am a facilitator, so um, I'm going to go ahead and move the pieces. Nobody take put their hands in there and move the pieces for me. Know that if I move a piece and you see that, that's something that you're seeing on the sand table that you want to take a cue from. So if I move the wind as an example, this is a good indicator of, of what the conditions on the ground are. If you see me move a resource, you know that's where they are at that time. So don't wait for me to, to brief you on something's changed, you're seeing a change. So take those cues and uh, as you guys make decisions, I'll move the pieces on the, on the table for you. Be sure to describe the table setup and piece representations. The table setup, um, I know you guys have done these before, but I'm going to give you scale first. I've got the long side of the table here. It is two miles long, okay? About a mile long <coughs> on the short end here. I've got indicators of north, south, east, and west, so the top of the table is north. I've got uh, different colors of yarn to represent different things uh, laid out on the table as well. I've used black yarn here to represent uh, a good paved two-lane highway. I've got uh, brown yarn here that represents uh, a dozer line. And I've got uh, toys here to represent different pieces of equipment. So they represent what they are in, in, in real life. I've got an engine here that represents a BLM Type 4 engine. Crew hauls for, for Type 1 crew hauls. Always paint a picture. That is, tell the story for your role players. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, painting a picture for you guys. All right, so you're in northern New Mexico. You are a division supervisor assigned to Division Bravo on the Zia fire. And I do have some things written up here, so you guys have that for your reference. It's uh, June 17th. Um, the weather that you see right there is predicted for the day, 92 degrees is the high, south winds 5 to 10 in the morning, and then switching to the southwest. This is an emerging Type 2 incident, but the Type 2 team has not taken over yet. So you're still working for an IC3 organization. Mm -hmm. Their intent is for you to take over Division Bravo and continue a burnout and, and basically tie up this corner of the fire that's still active. Resources assigned to you, you have a uh, a Type 4 engine, it's a BLM engine, and their designator is Engine 2. Allow time for questions. Does that have any other, any other questions? Do we know if there's an existing division, Bravo? You don't know that yet. 0700 fire behaviors, what's fire behavior doing? It's just, it's just backing into the wind and backing down slow. Okay. Previous days, fire behavior? It was, uh, they had a big, a big fire event. They had winds come up and the fire went about a thousand acres in an operational period. Okay. Always assign roles last and leave the hot seat at a decision point. You arrive on the line and you need to get as much information as you can and brief your resources. I understand. Looks good. Crew two. You're up on the line doing this burnout.
Those are one? Those are one. You're up on the hill. Copy. Engine two. You're the BLM engine down okay. here with the vision. All right. Division Bravo. All right. All right. Have fun with that. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so you show up on the line and you see crew, crew carriers with the hotshot crew gathering up on the back. The uh, BLM engine sitting here at the bottom of the, the hand line and you can see the burnout coming down the hill. Game on. Crew 2, uh, Division Bravo. Division Bravo, Crew 2, go ahead. Hey, uh, good morning. Um, uh, I'm going to be your division out here today. Just trying to find out. I've got uh, another uh, shop crew here with me. I've also got an engine. What kind of needs do you have up there? Yeah, we've been burning all night. I, I would say that they should, you know, bring some torches and fuel mostly. Uh, that's about what we're going to need to tie off this section of the line here. Here are some specific techniques that facilitators can utilize. A time tag can be used to compress time, to show results of decisions made by role players, or to create new decision points in the scenario. Okay, time tag. The BLM engine did, uh, did go ahead and scout this area, scouted the houses and saw that they're old. They're just old shacks, nobody lives in them. Um, but they went ahead and moved the engine back in here, and they're basically sitting there doing structure protection. Okay. Sure. The hotshot crew is moving up the hill. It's now 10 hundred hours, and the wind is picking up, and it's also kind of switching to southwest. Still mostly south, but switching southwest. We still do not have the, the Forest Service engine. Okay. Are, we, are we still waiting on fuel for the dozer, or are we? Did you order fuel for the dozer? I haven't ordered it. Okay, game, game on. Okay. Zero Fire Command, uh, Division Bravo. Sometimes a pre-planned input is best delivered to a role player using a handwritten note. A tactical timeout can be used to clarify an issue, answer questions, or switch role players. Okay, tactical timeout. I'm going to do a couple things here. Go ahead and update the, the scenario. Hotshot crew, type the uh, type one crew, crew one. We're going to head and send a dozer boss up to this dozer. Fire is continuing to pr progress down slope. Still no communication with the Forest Service engine. The BLM engine went ahead and moved back and is pumping the hose laid to support the the, the hotshot crews burning out down the down the line here. Division Bravo, why don't you switch with 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 Travis now? Yeah, you. So it's noon. Your southwest winds are, are, uh, are solid southwest winds now, and they are 20 miles an hour. As the facilitator, you need to stay on top of moving the pieces on the table. I understand. Um, could you go ahead and head down the highway to the east, and you'll see where we're gaggled up down here. Uh, there's a BLM Type 4 parked, and you can tie in with me there. That's uh, affirmative. We'll head that way. Thanks, Engine 2, Division Bravo. Division Bravo, engine two, go ahead. Hey, can we get some hose packs starting to hump up the hill towards uh, crew one? Often a Murphy's Law input is used to provide additional decision-making opportunities. These unexpected events should be realistic, and facilitators should have several of them in mind or pre-scripted in order to raise the tempo of the game if necessary. The final piece of the learning process is the after-action review.